Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I am answering your most asked questions. Okay, so what I did this morning was I went onto Instagram and I actually did a little Q&A where I asked people to submit questions. So I thought it would be a lot more helpful and interesting for me to be able to answer your questions through this YouTube space and so that I could actually freely talk um, because I talk a lot. <laughs> and so yeah, let's get started. Where is a good place to start if you're a beginner in graphic design? This was definitely one of the questions that I got the most. A lot of you guys are trying to figure out how to get your foot into the door or figure out like where you need to start. You have the interest, you have the passion for it. You just don't know how to get started. First things first, if you want to get into the creative field, you need a portfolio. So what I would advise you to do is to definitely, you know, start putting together a portfolio. You always need to have a strong portfolio if you want to get hired in the creative industry. And this is because, um, you know, coming from, you know, back when I was in college, a lot of my friends actually are not in the creative field. They're accountants or they're like teachers or lawyers or something. So in their cases, a resume matters the most and like things like cover letters and all that. But when you're trying to go into freelancing and become a creative and make a name for yourself, what's really important is having a really solid portfolio, whatever your field is, honestly. So um, in my case, when I was getting started, um, I had a lot of mock projects in my portfolio and also a lot of like school projects. So if you are looking to get started in the design field, I highly advise you to, you know, start creating some fun like concepts for yourself to design for. I know it's hard to find a real life client right now and that's totally okay. What you want to do then instead is think about like maybe your favorite musician and then give yourself like a fun little challenge of creating their album cover. And so that's one way to um, give yourself some creative challenges and to develop some creative projects. Another way you can start building your portfolio is maybe look around around you and see if you have any close friends or people in your family who need even something as simple as business cards. I know when I was in college and I was trying to build a portfolio, a lot of my friends at the time were trying to, you know, go into interviews to get jobs at different companies or whatnot. So they needed business cards. And so I literally like offered to des design so many business cards for my friends. And initially it started off with like, let me make you a business card. Just like buy me lunch at the cafeteria or something. I got a little bit more comfortable with designing name cards. So um, I had another friend who asked me to help them design not only their uh, business card, but also like a letterhead for their cover letters and stuff like that. So that was one way for me to also start just getting some type of creative projects that I could just show off any type of design skills that I have because that's the only way you're really gonna start building up some type of work to put in your portfolios. Figuring out ways for you to put together these like, whether it's real or fake or passion projects, um, that's how you're going to start identifying like, oh, I think I enjoy doing this specific type of design the most. And um, once you have that kind of figured out, it'll be a lot easier to trim down your portfolio and really cater it to the type of clients you want to have, the type of audience you want to show it to. When and how did you realize that you wanted to pursue a creative career? For me, I always grew up being the art kid. So before I got into USC as a fine arts major, I was actually preparing to go more into like, yeah, fine arts, painting. Like I was like a painter slash drawer in high school. Um, before that, I, I did know how to use like basic Photoshop because I used to love, love, love creating these little GIFs for like, I used to watch so much Disney Channel 
and like I used to be obsessed with like Lizzie McGuire and even Steven and That's a Raven and all these shows so I had a little like Zanga somewhere where I remember like taking bits and pieces I figured out how to um, take really funny clips from like Lizzie McGuire let's say and I would like turn them into like 10 second gifs and I would just like upload it on the internet and I wish I could go back and like find these because honestly it w it's kind of like the origin story of how I got into creating like graphics I guess but obviously like at the time I did not even think that creating you know like little gifs and stuff like that was a career option I didn't even know that I, it was just like a little hobby of mine but like mainly I was pursuing the arts I was doing lots of painting lots of drawings um, I even did like figure drawings and stuff in high school and so I got into USC with my like fine arts portfolio in your freshman year of college you have to go usually like take all the Kind of like the general arts courses it's usually required that you do like a variety of different programs or different classes so you can be kind of familiar with like the fundamentals of everything right so i took like print making classes i took um like pottery i remember i did like a ceramics class um, i did calligraphy and there was one class like digital tools that i took that i ended up really loving because it taught me how to use illustrator and um, also Photoshop. That's when I kind of started wondering like, do I enjoy like physical painting and like drawing more or do I like doing stuff in the digital space more? And um, also another factor was definitely like growing up, people always told me that, you know, fine artists make no money. And I definitely like, you know, kind of took that to heart, I guess. So. The switch for me didn't feel too like, oh my god, like I'm throwing away something that, you know, like is like my one true love. Like I didn't, it's not like I felt that way about fine arts or anything like that. So it, it was kind of like a smooth transition. And um, now I would say like here and there, like I doodle or like I try to paint stuff. But for the most part, like all the work that I do is digital or more in, i was not even digital but just in the more design field as opposed to the fine arts field but also what i think is really cool is i tend to hand draw or like do a lot of like doodles and textures and stuff like that that i incorporate into the designs that i create for a lot of my clients so um i feel like i found a way to digitize my like love for fine art into the yeah the, the the digital form the of like what i make for my clients which are you know all types of random designs on the internet <laughs> did you ever question if this career would be fit for you or if it would be stable for you Whew. um so i definitely questioned a lot especially when i first started i would say i you know like towards the end of college when you know all your friends are going out there and getting jobs at I don't know like financial advisor companies or they're becoming like big accounting firms people and I was just like Merp, like I don't even have a job lined up for me I don't know what I'm doing with, with my life and so that's kind of when I was doing the whole you know designing name cards for friends and trying to build a portfolio and at the time I was also applying to a uh, shit ton of like random corporations and design studios and things like that just trying to see where i can kind of hear back from and i had this weird mentality of like let's just get an interview and then see if i even want the job and that was kind of coming out of my own insecurities and desperation of wanting to feel like i I had something going for me, you know, especially since my friends were already starting to lock in jobs and or already had something lined up for them. And that made me anxious. So um, I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, I was like second guessing a lot because I realized after going to these like interviews with random corporations that needed to hire like an entry level uh, junior graphic designer or some like random studio that I honestly like didn't really know what kind of work they did and stuff I started to realize that 
maybe this wasn't really what I wanted because I just didn't feel it, feel it in my heart. And I didn't have, I don't even know if I should say like the guts to, but to just say like, okay, I'm just gonna lock in and to this job and see what I can get for myself. So I spent like a good six months after college just freelancing and also simultaneously trying to build up my portfolio. And I started getting, you know, more and more work from like YouTube clients and people in the social media industry. I worked with a few like bloggers back then. And I actually really enjoyed creating like banners and different types of social media assets for them. And then that kind of turned into like branding projects where um, I was getting paid more to create like a full, you know, brand identity for um, these content creators and these content creator related brands and whatnot. And I think that's when I started realizing, oh, I think this could actually be a real career option because I was starting to calculate like how much money I was making and also, you know, like rates and things like that. And I was like, you know, like, I think if I just build up my rates a little bit, it might even feel a little bit more lucrative than going into like an entry level position somewhere and then needing to like work another like five years away before I could get a raise because as you know, with freelancing, there's no like rules right so you make up your rates you make up your everything and you get to justify it with your talent and your work definitely in my first year of freelancing i started thinking to myself like i'm gonna freaking try to turn this into a real career option and like let's just see where this goes Whew, okay so the past two questions felt a little bit heavy so i want to go with like something a little bit more light a little bit more like rapid fire vibes how do you drink your coffee always black and iced just like my soul <laughs> i don't know i'm really not into like super milky coffee obviously there's always exceptions you know when i'm feeling like really happy or if i just want that sugar rush high whatever it is then i'll go get myself like a good phil's mint mojito coffee but other than that i yeah i tend to stick to my iced americanos you know cold brews during the fall i always go to starbucks and get a good cup of the pumpkin cream cold brew because that is that stuff is amazing snowy adoption story Ooh. okay so fun fact me and yuki had no idea when we met snowy that we were going to take her home so we had been in the talks of getting a dog just because a lot of our closer friends they all have at least one or two dogs and so it was definitely something that like an idea that yuki and i were playing around with where we, we honestly couldn't agree on what type of dog to get because Yuki being a guy who was like, I want like a man, manly man dog. And he likes these like very exotic looking dogs like Saluki's. I think it's because it rhymes with his name, Yuki Saluki. I don't know. But anyway, Saluki's, um, he likes Borzois and I was like, oh, like not into it. I want something cuter, like fluffier. So I guess in that sense, I won. <laughs> but um, I remember like we w walked into, you know, like, see dogs and in california here and i laid my eyes on puppy snowy she was like eight weeks old and i just like fell in love because she like all the other dogs were kind of like looking or like being really yappy and crazy and stuff and then snowy like just made eye contact with us and then was like and we were like oh my god can we please see her so we took her out and we we're observing her for a little bit. We played with her, you know, like we're like on the floor trying to figure her out. And she just seemed so, I don't know. We just had this little connection and I, I just instantly fell in love. Yuki fell in love and that was it. The first time we ever went to check out dogs, we just took one home and we never looked back no regrets my mom lives in korea right now and i like remember facetiming her and i was like i don't know how i'm gonna tell her this so i'm just facetimed her i was like mom so i got a dog and she was literally like what the f and the first thing she asked me was 
well, so what's the refund policy on that thing? And I was like, no, there is no refund. I should have, yeah, I don't know. I should have named her a refund. That would have been kind of cute. If I could get a refund on you, there's no refund. You're stuck with me forever. You know? Okay, so let's go back to some serious business career related questions. How do I do my taxes, LOL? <laughs> okay, so this definitely as a freelancer, I feel you. It's a whole nother thing that you have to really educate yourself on because, you know, I think when you work at like a big company, like a corporation environment, it's pretty simple, um, pretty straightforward. You just have to follow your returns. Um, and submit them, you know, based on the fiscal calendar and all of that. But there's a lot of little moving parts that you have to watch out for when you are trying to do your taxes as a freelancer. So first off, I file two different types of taxes every year. One is like my personal federal income taxes. And then the second is my business taxes. And basically personal would mean, you know, what I make as Don Lee, the person, the human. And um, the latter, the business taxes would apply for what I made as Don Lee Design, AKA DLD Studio. When you are a freelancer, technically you don't need to file um, business taxes if you are not a registered business. You could just operate as a freelancer and still make money. You don't need to be like a registered LLC or anything like that, that's completely fine. Um, but when you are being a just like a freelancer and working for somebody, there's a form that you need to be mindful of and should probably fill out. Um, so one is called the W-9. Let's say you are being hired by this person or this employee, whoever. They are most likely going to ask you to fill out a W-9. And a W-9 is basically like this uh, one or two page form that you need to fill out and it is for the person who's hiring you, the taxpayer, to be able to identify um, who they paid basically so that they can file their tax returns. It's, it's a way for the, the IRS to basically verify that whoever they paid the taxes to is a legitimate person and they're not just like faking it or whatever. So basically if someone hired you for a gig and paid you, I believe the cutoff is $600. So if anyone has paid you more than $600 in a year to do a certain type of project, then you most likely will have to fill out a W-9 for them. And so for me, um, as a business owner and you know the owner of DLD Studio, what I would do is when I pay someone to do work for me and I'm paying them more than $600, I always ask for their W-9. So that is an important form as a freelancer to keep in mind. Honestly, I feel like the whole tax talk is, it's a bit of a headache, but it's really important if you're trying to be a freelancer. And so I should probably maybe do a separate video on this. Yeah, let me, know, let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing it. I'd love to know. On top of the two different taxes that I pay, there is also, um, I make IRA contributions every year and I max out on it. That's basically like your retirement fund for people like us who, you know, I'm not at a company, so there's no like 401k or anything like that. So for me, um, that would be either the traditional or the Roth IRA. And my accountant always advises me to max out on it. I believe that's $6,000. So I've been putting in the max contributions every year for the past couple years. So yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, where do you get inspiration from? Ooh, I think this one is always hard, but for let's say client work, my best inspiration is my clients. So when I'm creating designs for Lore, like I just think about her, I think about her, that sounds so like weird. Um, I'm just thinking about like what she likes and you know, now I feel like I can call her like my friend because I've worked with her for so long and we've had some conversations outside of just work. And I think like when you, when you are creating something for somebody, they need to be your main inspiration because 
what you create for them is supposed to represent them and it's supposed to translate to their audience and if you can't think from that perspective you're not then creating something for them and so for for client work i always say your main inspiration should be your client and what they're all about what their audience is all about that's what helps you create successful designs for a client for other types of inspiration i would say all sorts of things i watch so much tv like and i've come to realize that when i've been watching a lot of tv lately like they have really cool sick opening credits and stuff and i'll see stuff and i'll be like oh my god like that's such a cool thing and then i'll just like take a quick snapchat or a video of it so my camera roll is basically filled with like so much random stuff like screenshots from things obviously i love going on websites like design inspiration um pinterest is a big one um behance but i also try not to like look at other people's like design work too much because i find it obviously it's good to get inspired by someone else's work and at the end of the day like they always say like there is really no like originator anymore in this world because everyone takes inspiration from everyone else and i i totally believe that but at the same time like if you know that someone has created some type of work like you don't want to go ahead and literally rip everything off because especially if you're posting that ripped off work to the internet it's really easy these days for people to find out and then for them to do like an image search or just refer back to the originator so um, try not to like just copy someone else's work because i don't think that helps with your creativity at all so the next two questions i'm going to kind of combine them into one because i feel like you can't talk about one without the other so the first question that i got is how do you keep a consistent workflow when it comes to your career how do you manage work and clients and i think for me they go hand in hand managing work and managing clients it is all goes hand in hand being a freelancer means that you often have to juggle um, a lot of different clients and at a lot of different like speeds. So let's see, I want to start off by pointing out that for me, um, I have come to structure my business now and my schedule in a way where more than half of my time is actually dedicated now to working with my long term clients. So that would be clients who have me on a retainer and therefore I am repeatedly making like similar type of content or graphics or whatever it is for certain clients. I would say the rest of my schedule is dedicated to either, you know, um, doing one-off projects because of course like I can't not do one-off projects. There always comes a time once in a while where there's like a really juicy or like a really fun type of like a one-time project that comes your way and you course have to take it on so i do definitely a lot some time for that and then the other times are also dedicated now now that i have dld academy and i have my youtube channel it goes into things like that and also like my social media and also just general communication with everyone takes up quite a bit of time if you are going into full-time freelancing and you are in the stage of kind of finding clients and whatnot i really recommend working with a lot of long-term clients because often that brings a lot of stability and security into your life and your schedule and i personally am the type of person where at the end of the day like i do like to have some type of security and like a feeling that I have a general basis of income coming in and also that makes it a lot easier for you to like plan out your week or your next month because you know what to expect or at least for like half of it also the benefits of working with like long-term clients is usually um, in the beginning obviously you have to spend some time getting to know each other and that what their aesthetic is all about and what they like about your work so it takes some time like figuring out but once you get into to the group of it i think it's really fun like it's kind of like dating or something like you're you're like getting to know your client better and the better you get to know someone for me at least it becomes easier and more more fun to design for them because i know what they want and also they know what to expect from me so there's like a certain level of trust you have to learn how to be a little bit flexible and take curveballs i'm sure 
the reason why you decided to go into freelancing is because you maybe like having a little bit of diversity and you want to be able to choose and pick like the type of projects that you take on or the different types of clients that you work with and with that comes the challenge of being able to juggle your own schedule and while it is such a privilege to be able to work at your own pace and make up your own schedule as opposed to reporting to like a certain boss and them expecting you to be somewhere from a certain time to a certain time there's a lot of scheduling problems that could arise from it you know last minute your client might need something from you really last minute one of your clients instead of wanting to post on monday they want to post on friday or vice versa so you do need to have a little bit of flexibility and just be able to move with the flow if that makes sense so that it doesn't like stress you out and um, for me, like I'm a pretty like I would say I'm pretty even keeled like easygoing type of personality or so I think so I think that for me It's not like super hard for me to get used to if like I need to move some things around for my client um, you just have to have that type of mentality where you're okay with switching things around and You can kind of move with it going back to the question about the workflow uh, I think you need to be good at identifying um, your schedule. So for me, um, in the beginning, it was really hard for me to figure out how I was going to plan out my whole schedule because I just had no idea like how long everything would take and what. But after, you know, now that I'm in like year five, year six of freelancing, I have a pretty good sense of how long a certain type of project should take. So when you take that into your calculations, it becomes a lot easier to just look at like a certain incoming project and go, okay, I can schedule that in from, let's see, like from two weeks from now, I have this availability open, so I can kind of schedule you in then, and then we will wrap up this project by the end of like le next month or something. And um, I do that now, so I rarely ever take on projects anymore in the same week or even in the same month. These days, like everything is so planned out for me that I have projects that I take on like, next month or something. But again, you know, sometimes certain projects take on longer, sometimes things come up. So I, I do try to plan out my whole, the my next couple months, but I also have this, sense of expectation where I know something's gonna come up and I'm ready for it. Okay, last question. Advice for young designers? Ooh, so general. Okay, number one, be confident and get into the habit of sharing your work. Share your process, document everything. For me too, for the longest time, it didn't like that switch just didn't flip on in my brain where I'm like working on something and I don't wanna showcase it because it's progress and I don't want to showcase something that's not finished people are gonna judge me but what I also realize is process is literally everything and so like you know it's just as simple as when you're making a some type of graphic just go to QuickTime turn on a, your like screen record or whatever and then just record it and it's really weird when you like watch that footage back because it helps you figure out what your process is once you know how your mind works and how you concept and then you put that into like a visual form um, you being able to do that and that helps you so much in terms of being able to verbalize that to potential clients and so i really recommend get into the habit of you know process 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 record it share it um, also that's one way to kind of showcase like why you deserve to get paid a certain rate because it just builds a lot more trust in the client when they know how you work. And if you're able to verbalize that, it helps you justify your rates, it helps you justify everything. And also it looks cool when you add it to like your portfolio. Something about being a designer, it makes you shy. And at least for me, like I used to be so shy about putting myself out on social media. I used to be so shy about just like claiming to the world that I'm a designer or I do this or that. but 
I think just what I realized is you have to do that because it's actually really great practice for you being a freelancer. Like being a freelancer means you're not just a designer. You have to be your own manager, right? You have to be able to talk to your potential future clients and not sound like a weirdo. Like you have to be confident and that doesn't come overnight. I mean, some people obviously are naturals and they're just born with it. But for most, most of us like me, um, it did not come overnight. It took a lot of years of just putting myself in front of a camera or putting myself in front of a client and just like I, I would just like squeeze out a pair of balls that I never knew that I had and then it would just just like muster up the courage to voice my opinions, voice my thoughts and showcase my work and my voice would be like trembling but I'm still able to like pushing myself to get a point across. That has really, really helped me to, I think, become who I am now. Confidence is everything for a freelancer. You need to be a confident person. You need to be able to, they can be confident in trusting you. All right, guys. So I think that's it for our Q&A video today. And I hope that the answers that I gave provided some sort of clarity or transparency to what I do and this industry that you're curious about. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you like these Q&A videos and if I should do more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.